Hi, everybody. It's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today, we're getting into topic 4.5, which is on the cell cycle. So this is the latter half of the unit here. Um, the first part was all about cell communication, and now we're getting into the cell cycle. And there's a little bit of tie-in for cell communication here um, in regards to the cell cycle. But um, yeah, I, I get why that's linked together here, but we're kind of taking a little bit of a left turn here um, with what we're talking about in this unit. So uh, here we go. Let's get it going here. Um, this is one of the big topics in all of biology here. So here we are. Uh, the cell cycle, what is it? It is the growth and reproductive cycle of a eukaryotic cell. So this doesn't really apply to bacteria and that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, this is the life cycle of the reproductive cycle of a cell. Um, and every cell goes through this um, with the exception of some that we're going to talk about here in just a minute. Um, but this is how, you know, this is how life permeates here a little bit. Cells divide and make copies of themselves. All right, so if you can see down here, this is a simple schematic of what's called mitosis. A cell copies its DNA and splits into two identical daughter cells. Um, and the most of its life is spent preparing to do this. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at uh, the cell cycle first, which is what I have pictured over here. And then we're going to look at the phases of mitosis. Um, something to note about the cell cycle is that it's highly regulated and controlled. All right, a cell cannot progress through the phases of the cell cycle without um, some certain checkpoints being passed. And a cell needs to, re uh, as I put up here, a cell must receive a go-ahead signal, that's the cell communication part, to progress through each stage. Okay, so as we're talking about the sequential stages of the cell cycle over here and of mitosis, um, a cell needs to have a go-ahead and everything needs to be ready to go um, in order for it to progress to the next stage. Otherwise, you know, cell division is not going to uh, not going to happen. We're going to talk about that more in the next topic here, but we're getting into the basics of the cell cycle and mitosis for this unit. So here is the cell cycle. Um, simply put, you can see five different phases on here. They are G1, S, G2, M and G0. Um, you can kind of see G0 is an offshoot of the rest of the cycle here. Um, and as you can see, a cycle, you know, repeats itself. So this is going to continue on for, well, a cell's life, right? Um, so the first thing I want to point out here is that G1, S, and G2, this whole phase of the cell cycle over here, if you can imagine it like clock going from like one o'clock to, you know, like 1130. I don't know, maybe 11 o'clock there. Um, most of the cell's life is in interphase, all right? In gap one, S and gap two here. Um, that's what the G stand for, by the way. All right, um, in gap one, in G1, the, uh, the cell is active, it's duplicating organelles, and it's growing, all right? So something that you should be familiar with is what's generally happening um, in each phase of the cell cycle. And what's happening during this long phase over here is that the cell is just kind of doing its cell thing. It's doing its job, it's active, um, it's, it could be copying, it's mitochondria, lysosomes, that kind of stuff. And it's growing, you know, it's doing its thing, all right? In order to split into two, which is what, you know, cell division is all about, you got to grow in size a little bit. And that happens during gap one. All right, um, when a cell receives the go-ahead to progress to the next phase of the cell cycle, it'll go to S phase, um, where its DNA is copied or it's replicated. We're going to learn all about how DNA replication works in unit six to form what are called sister chromatids. And I'm going to show you what those are here in just a minute. But basically, right, if you're, again, if you're a cell and you're going to split into two copies of yourself, you're going to make a clone of yourself. In other words, you have to copy all of your DNA, your genetic instructions, your molecular instructions. Okay, and that's what happens during S phase. All right, and once that that's complete, the cell gets to move to gap two or G2 phase, uh, where it's going to make a whole bunch of proteins, it's going to make a whole bunch of ATP, and it's going to copy these uh, special um, organelles called centrosomes, all right? In other words, it's preparing itself, it's preparing a whole lot of proteins and energy and these special proteins for cell division, all right? And M stands for mitosis over here. And there's another phase in cell division called cytokinesis. But basically what's happening here is what we're going to get to in a second here. I'm going to show you every step of mitosis. All these steps of mitosis are fitting into this green phase over here. Um, it's only about 12.5% of the cell's life cycle is spent uh, dividing, while the other 87 7.5% is spent in interphase. So interphase and mitosis are basically opposites of one another, all right? The cell is not dividing or it's preparing to divide. And then, um, you know, it's dividing during M, 
Okay, and we're gonna get into all the phases there. All right, but something you might've noticed here is that there's an offshoot off of uh, gap one over here and it's called gap zero or G zero phase. And this is non-dividing, right? So this is where a cell might receive a signal like, hey, you're not gonna divide anymore. You're just gonna keep doing your job because you are so highly specialized. You're so good at doing your job that you don't really need to divide. We'll take care of you. Um, keep doing your thing. That's what happens during gap zero. So, so certain cells like neurons and muscle fibers, for example, are typically in gap zero where they're not going to divide um, because they're so specialized. They're doing their one job and uh, they don't need to divide basically. But in some circumstances, gap one or the cell cycle can be re-entered in response to a signal. So a gap zero cell might be able to receive a signal and then initiate the, uh, the cascade, the transduction pathway where it's going to begin um, gap one again and begin the cell cycle. All right, so that's the basics of the cell cycle. Be familiar with that, all right? But now we have to get into the details about that M phase, that green phase up there, mitosis. And here I have it defined. It is a type of eukaryotic cell division that transfers all of a cell's DNA to two genetically identical daughter cells. So in other words, what it's called, its genome needs to be copied and it needs to be split evenly into two daughter cells. So one cell becomes two, okay? Um, now, this is not how human beings reproduce, right? We do not make a copy of ourselves um and copy everything that we have and then pfft, split into two that is not how this works we're going to talk about well uh how that happens in our unit five okay but um all of our cells with the exception of a few divide like this okay so uh when you are growing from a child to an adult or when your body tissues are basically just taking care of themselves and replacing old dead tissues this is what's happening um a cell basically makes a copy of all of its stuff and splits into two um that's basically it that's mitosis right there um so as i put in the second bullet point it's used for growth tissue repair and asexual reproduction okay so as you're growing as your tissues are you know growing from uh you know a child to an adult all right my a whole lot of mitosis is occurring a whole lot of cell division is occurring um and especially in the parts of your body that are actually growing in size um and throughout uh, throughout life this happens as well right so for example um your skin your skin cells are constantly replaced um by new ones all right newly divided ones so your skin cells are constantly dividing and dying out um blood cells same thing bone cells intestinal lining cells especially they're rapidly dividing and dying out and getting replaced all the time and that's what mitosis is for all right, so keep that in mind. It's used for growth and tissue repair and for sexual asexual reproduction, right? So asexual means that, well, there's no partner involved and you're just gonna split into two. Um, some organisms, some eukaryotic, eukaryotic cells like uh, protists or whatever, or maybe like yeast can reproduce asexually and just basically make a copy of themselves as well. And there's some plants and animals that can do that as well. Um, but yeah, that's what mitosis is used for. And that's something important to know. All right. So what uh, we're going to spend the rest of the video on pretty much here are the phases of mitosis. All right. And this is the simple schematic that I had before. We're going to get into a little bit more detail in just a second. All right. But interphase, this is what a cell looks like in interphase. And again, that is not part of my mitosis, right? That is this um, G1, S, and G2 phases right over here. The first phase of mitosis is called prophase, and it looks something like that. We're going to talk about what that looks like. It's followed by metaphase, which is followed by anaphase, telophase, and then lastly, it's cytokinesis over here. Um, and we're going to talk about what each of these phases does, all right, what happens in each phase. Um, and these follow in this same sequential order every single time a cell is going to divide. Okay. Um, and once again, this is this whole thing right here um, from prophase to cytokinesis is happening in that green section of that cell cycle that we were looking at just before. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's start talking about prophase. Um, this is the first phase of mitosis. So when a cell gets a go ahead to like, all right, G2 is over, you can start to divide. Um, this is what's going to happen first. Um, the sister chromatids are condensing, which are these things right here. Um, and as you can see, they are inside the nucleus or the nuclear envelope which is the membrane that makes up the nucleus, right? So they're in the nucleus. Um, the sister chromatids are this cell's DNA. And I'm gonna show you what that means here in just a second. Um, something else called the mitotic spindle is forming, which is a whole bunch of uh, protein fibers that the cell has put together and through what's called the cytoskeleton. Um, and it's going to play a very important role here. It's going to split the cell apart. 
Um, the spinatotic spindle forms and the centrosomes. All right, we talked about the centrosomes being copied in gap two. Um, these are special organelles that are going to uh, assemble the mitotic spindle. They're going to assemble those protein fibers um, to start to put, split up the cell, and they're going to move to the opposite sides of the cell. All right, and the nuclear envelope is going to start to break down in uh, in mitosis. All right, so check it out. Um, why is this going to start to break down? Well, um, in order for two new cells to form, you need to get the DNA out of the nucleus, right? That's the nucleus's job is to contain the DNA. Um, and in order to get the DNA out, you got to break down the nuclear envelope. You got to break down the nucleus. All right. Uh, but I keep referring to these sister chromatids over here. Um, and what exactly are they? And well, I mentioned before that they are DNA. All right. So before we go any further here, um, we got to talk about how DNA is packaged in order for it to get ready to for division. Okay. So think about this when you are moving, all right, when you're moving or you're going on a trip or you're either moving to a new house or something. All right. What do you have to do with all of your stuff before you move or before you travel? Well, you have to pack it, right? You have to package it into suitcases so that it's easier to take from one place to another. And that's kind of the same idea with DNA. DNA is, there's tons of DNA uh, within the nucleus of a cell, all right? It's spread out all over the place and it's a form called chromatin, okay? It's uncondensed. But um, before cell division begins, it needs to be packaged into what are called chromosomes. And you've probably heard of chromosomes before. I'm going to be talking a lot about chromosomes um, in unit five here coming up. Okay, But uh, DNA basically gets wound around these special proteins called uh, histones. All right. Um, and they get assembled together to form these X-shaped structures. It's highly coiled and packaged together so that it can be moved easily. All right. So think of a chromosome as basically DNA in a form that makes it easy to move. It's packed up DNA. Um, and that's what uh, that's what are is being moved here. So these X shapes here are two sets of chromosomes called sister chromatids, right? So, and uh, these chromosomes here, here's one chromosome I'm highlighting right here, um, and here's another one that I'm putting my cursor over. I guess I'm not highlighting it. Um, and they are identical copies of one another. Remember, during S phase of the cell cycle, the DNA is copied. And what specifically is being copied here are chromosomes um, being uh, well identical copies of chromosomes. All right. So this is packaged DNA um, that's been copied and they're linked together by a structure called a centromere. And don't get that confused with centrosome. All right. The centromere um, is the connection between those two sister chromatids, these two copied sets of DNA that have been packaged up. All right. So what we're looking at here in prophase, all right, and well, so, uh, consequentially metaphase, um, are these condensed chromosomes that have been packaged up and stuck together um, with that centromere. All right. Um, so following prophase, once all that stuff is done, the mitotic spindle has moved on to opposite ends, The or excuse me, the mitotic spindle is assembled. The centrosomes are at opposite ends of the cell. The nuclear envelopes are broken down and those sister chromatids are condensed. They're fully condensed. They move to the middle during metaphase and they align along the center. All right, so when you're going to be looking at cells, I almost guarantee you you're going to be doing a lab here in your AP biology class uh, where you're going to be identifying cells under a microscope, what, um, figuring out what phase they're in. Metaphase is super easy to identify because you can see the chromosomes right along the middle of the cell or what's called the equator. All right, so uh, these chromosomes are about to get split up from one another. All right, and to ensure an even split, they need to be perfectly lined up along the, uh, they need to be perfectly lined up along the center of the cell. Okay. Um, and once that's, once we get the all clear, all right, there's what's called a checkpoint at metaphase over here. Once we get the all clear, this uh, mitotic spindle begins to pull apart and cleave what are called the centromeres um, and pull apart the sister chromatids, the copied chromosomes from each other um, and starts separating them to opposite directions of the cell. All right. So this is where our cell division are actually dividing actually begins. Um, there's one last check here between metaphase and anaphase um, that makes sure that all of our chromosomes are being split up evenly from one another and therefore we can start to split the chromosomes up and build two new cells here. All right, so once anaphase wraps up and we split up those cells, and that's the shortest phase of mitosis, by the way, um, the mitotic spindle starts to break down, all right? It no longer attaches itself to the chromosomes, to the centromeres or anything like that. Um, the nuclear envelope starts to reform and we start to 
form two new cells, each with their own uh, nucleus, all right? And during telophase, the cells are not fully split apart yet, um, so the cytoplasm divides. All the other contents of this cell, um, besides the what's in the nucleus, start to divide in this phase as well, all right? They start to get split up evenly between those two cells. All right, so the mitotic spindle's breaking down, the new nuclear envelope reforms, and the cytoplasm divides. All right, and then our last phase, which technically is not part of mitosis, uh, it comes after, kind of during mitosis. Um, if we're getting technical here, mitosis is the division of the nucleus, but uh, cyto uh, cytokinesis is where everything else kind of splits up, and this is final. This is uh, this is the last phase here, um, where it was something called a cleavage furrow, which is a pinch in the plasma membrane between animal cells. Remember, animal cells don't have a cell wall, so the cell membranes are just kind of going to pinch off from one another, and when they form that pinch and they separate from each other, that's called a cleavage furrow. Um, or a cell plate forms in plant cells, and plant cells have a cell wall, right? So once that plate forms between those two newly formed cells, the cell division is complete. You have two what are called daughter cells. Um, these are identical to one another, all right? There is no genetic difference between these two cells. Um, the DNA in one nucleus is exactly the same as the DNA in the other nucleus. It's done its job, all right? That's cytokinesis. Okay, um, so to recap here, hopefully we got everything. Uh, the cell cycle is the growth or the reproductive cycle of the eukaryotic cells that takes place in sequential stages and in, in, in order every single time. Um, it's the first phase is what's called interphase, which is gap one, S and gap two. Um, in gap one, growth, duplication of organelles occurs. Um, you know, the cell's doing its job. S phase is when the um, DNA is replicated. It's in this chromatin form. Uh, gap two is when proteins and ATP and centrosomes are produced in order for it to get ready for mitosis, which is cell division, um, where the actual you know nucleus gets split, the chromosomes get split, and the rest of the cell components get split. Um, I guess that should have been another bullet point over here. And then gap zero is the non-dividing stage, right? Uh, where a cell gets told basically, hey, you don't have to divide anymore, but we're stay, stay in touch just in case we need you to divide again. Um, all right, and then here's our phases of mitosis once again. It's the type of cell division in eukaryotes that result in two identical daughter cells. They have the same genome. They have the same exact set of DNA. Um, it's used for growth, tissue repair, and asexual reproduction, okay, growing of new tissues or replacing of old tissues, and asexual reproduction. Um, some organisms are able to just make copies of themselves and split into two. That's great. That's what's called asexual reproduction. Um, here's their phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. Prophase is when the sister chromatids and the mitotic spindle form the centromeres go to the pole the, remember that nuclear envelope starts to break down so that, that the chromosomes can get out and chromosomes are uh, once again those uh, that package dna uh, they get lined up the sister chromatids get lined up along the middle of the cell during metaphase they split up during anaphase to the opposite ends and then when the nuclear envelope starts to reform and the spindle breaks down um, that's when we uh, get to telophase and we are approaching and forming two daughter cells but we don't have officially have two daughter cells until cytokinesis where that cleavage for forms or the cell plate forms uh, between plant cells, the cleavage furrow between animal cells. All right, that is it for this video. Uh, we're going to get into how the cell cycle is regulated in our next one. Please let me know if you have any questions and we'll see you next time.